In that dark gray hour just before the dawn, Mrs. Gregory and her chartered rescue boat reached the location of the magic island. This weird island has been submerged, raised, and sunk since we saw it last. And Captain Bradford and the girl commander nearly went down with it. They floated all night, clinging to a small rubber life raft, and were just about ready to give up hope when a searchlight swept the sky. Johnson, in the pilot house of the rescue boat, thought he saw a tiny light far ahead and called Mrs. Gregory, Jerry, and Joan to watch with him. Jerry signals with the searchlight, and a faint answering signal is seen. All is excitement aboard the Gregory boat as they bear down rapidly on the two people in the water, the first faint streaks of dawn lighting up the ocean. There they are, Johnson. I'm out of it, Mrs. Gregory. Yep, there's two of them, all right, and they're hanging on to something in the water. Some form of small life raft, I think. Yes, Joan, dear. That's what it looks like. Oh, how far are they, Johnson? Well, we'll pick them up in just two or three minutes. Oh, Tex! Hello, Tex! They cannot hear you, Jerry. But they're waving their arms. Look, they're all right. I told you they would be. Well, they're certainly active enough. Can't be much wrong with them. Well, I'll go and get the landing stage ready for them. Thanks, Jerry. Joan, dear. Yes, Mother. Will you go into our cabin, lay out some warm, dry clothes for Elaine, and get out some extra blankets? She'll need them. Certainly, Mother. I will take care of everything. Apparently, the captain has managed to keep the Euclidians bottled up. There isn't one in sight. If he's done that, it's... It's little short of a miracle. Ahoy, the boat! Johnson, did you hear that? Yes, sounded like the captain. It was. Oh, Johnson, he's all right. Tex! Hello, Tex! Hello, Oh, Johnson. Tex, he... he... Well, I don't blame you much, Mrs. Gregory. Hey, Skipper! Aye. Shove over here, on the double. Aye. Move faster than that, man. Can't you see Mrs. Gregory's fainted? Uh, Here, take her in her cabin. Uh, I'll give you a hand. Um, I'm all right. I didn't faint, Johnson. Well, you certainly gave a good imitation of it. Hold on, Skipper. Why? You needn't carry me now, Skipper. I'll be all right. Fainted. She didn't faint. Will you please put Mrs. Gregory down? I. Uh, Thanks, just the same, Skipper. I. Uh, isn't there anything in the world which will cause that man to say more than one word at a time? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, I'm all right now. How near are we to text me, Lane? Mighty close now. McLeod! Aye, Mr. Johnson. Hold your motors down hard. Aye. Ahoy there, Tex. Are you all right? They're okay, bud. How is Elaine? Doing very nicely, thank you. Huh. Another one of those girls you can't upset. Oh, Elaine is quite a person. I've got the landing stage all ready. Right, Jerry. I'll come back amidships. Go ahead, Mrs. Gregory. I'll stay on duty here. Thank you, Johnson. You're always on duty somewhere. Hurry up, Mrs. Gregory. We're nearly to them. Coming, Jerry. Stand by, McLeod. Full speed astern. Full speed astern. You'll have that stage alongside you in a minute, Tex. We're watching it. Are you ready to grab this ladder, Elaine? I will do so, Captain. Let me go down the ladder, Jerry. Well, it's swaying pretty badly. I don't mind that. I want to be the one to bring them aboard. Well, okay, Mrs. Gregory. Oh, Tex, give me your hand. I'm all right, Pat. And Elaine, you must be nearly dead. We did not fare badly. Come on up the ladder. I'll help you. Thank you, Mrs. Gregory. I'm right up here, Elaine. Give me your hand as soon as you get up high enough. It is good to see you, Jerry. Boy, it's sure good to see you, too. I will take charge of Elaine now, Jerry. Come to our cabin, Elaine. You must have some warm, dry clothing at once. Hey, look. Look at the captain and Mrs. Gregory. Why, what did you see, Jerry? Oh, oh nothing. Not, not a thing. You hurry up and take Elaine to your cabin. I, I do not wish to trouble you. Oh, it is no trouble. Come at once with me, And Elaine. before you do anything else, you're going to get into some dry clothing and have something hot to drink. No time for that now. Gee. Hello, Jerry. Gee, we're glad to see you, Tex. Maybe you think I'm not glad to be here. Did you bottle up all the Euclidians? We sure did, son. Every last one of them. Say, how do we get them on board? Now, Jerry, that can wait. Tex needs some dry clothing and some hot food. Later, Pat. Just now, we've got to handle this matter of the Euclidians. Something may happen to allow them to escape. We'd better get busy. Well, 
What do we do? I want you to go up and send Johnson to the radio cabin for instructions. You hold the wheel while he's gone. And tell the engineer not to move off this spot. Aye, aye, sir. I'll send Johnson to you right away. Tex, you're wet and cold and tired. All of that, Pat, dear, but all of that can wait. Let's go in the radio cabin. Did things work out according to your plans? Not entirely. They almost had us when they raised that island again. But the last two bottles of my solvent sank the island. Elaine and I managed to hang on all night. Oh, at least it's warm in here. Yeah, and I'll have Jerry bring me some hot coffee when he comes back. You haven't heard anything from Euclidia on this radio, I suppose? No, and we haven't tried to contact them. Just as well, though they've probably heard all we said to each other. Well, welcome to the ship, Captain. Thanks, Johnson. Nice work getting here. Thanks to McLeod. He cried bitter tears over his poor engines all the way down here. But he kept them running. Fair enough. Now, here's the setup. I want to take these Euclidians aboard at once. Porter's enough for them? I think so, Tex. We didn't have time to fix the boat up properly, but there are comfortable, clean quarters for nearly 300 below decks, and food enough to take us back to Los Angeles. That's all we need. All right, Johnson. I'll get them on the radio and tell them what they're to do. You stay in the bow. Keep the ship in this position. That landing stage is practically over the surface airlock I'll make them come up through. Well, what if they come up with weapons? Take one of the crew up forward with you, Johnson. Have him train that large telescope on the spot where Euclidians start popping out of the water. I'll tell them we've got some powerful kind of gun pointing at them. They won't know the difference. That's a good idea, Captain. But, but are you sure they'll start popping out? I'll take care of that with the radio. Anything else? That's all. How about getting them peaceably into the hold once they're aboard, Tex? We've men enough here to guarantee that. I think our trouble with Euclidia is all over. They won't have much fight left in them when they get up here. Well, I'll shove off. You want Jerry in here? Yes, for the present. I'll send him out to you later. He knows more of those Euclidean tricks than you do. Right, Captain. Well, Pat, here we are. Yes, Tex, here we are. And last night I thought... Well, I thought we'd never be together again. Mm, I'd like to do nothing but sit here and look at you. There's work to be done. First thing is to see if our friends care to enter into a little radio talk. Well, I doubt it. I think they will. Bradford to Euclidia. Bradford to Euclidia. Answer at once. What will you do if they refuse, Dave? They won't refuse. Thales on Euclidia to Bradford. Euclidian transmission chamber to Gregory Boat. What is your message, Captain Bradford? Hello, Thales. You will pass these instructions to everyone in Euclidia. This is final. Do you understand that? Your instructions will be followed. Then listen carefully. You will arrange for your entire colony to come aboard this boat immediately. You will leave Euclidia only through the surface airlock near this boat. Any attempt to leave by any other means will force me to release my formula and immediately flood the city of Euclidia, destroying everything in it. What of the animals and various domestic fowl and beasts? They will be cared for. After you are all aboard, I will arrange a guard for my crew. They will remain on Euclidia until those animals may be taken out to safety. I understand. We are to begin evacuation of the city at once. I suppose you realize that we may leave that lock only one at a time, and that several hours will be required. I realize all that. Start at once. We are ready to take you aboard. You, Thales, shall be the last to leave Euclidia, and your life will be the guarantee of the actions and safety of the others. That is well. We will begin at once. Prepare to receive the first of our colony in less than 180 seconds. Good. That is all. 180 seconds. Tex, they can be coming out of that lock in three minutes. That's what Thaley says, and his mistakes are few and far between. I will take you to the captain. Hey, I got it this far. I can take it in. Now, what are you two fighting about? Sounds like home. Well, I got this coffee from the galley for you, Tex, and Joan I here... I wanted to bring it in to you, Captain, but Jerry would not allow it. That wasn't very gallant, Jerry. Well, well, maybe not. But Joan took the coffee to Elaine. Ah, uh, say, this is mighty good, Jerry. <laughs> Certainly hits a spot. How is Elaine, Joan? She is apparently quite well, though there was not time to make sure. 
No time. No time for what? Something happened to her? Yeah. She went to sleep. Oh, well, that won't hurt her a great deal. You know, that girl has plenty of nerve. She deserves a rest. But she did not even have her coffee. I sent Jerry to the kitchen huh. and... Kitchen? I've told you a hundred times, on a boat, it's the galley. Very well, Jerry. I sent you to the galley. And before you returned with the coffee, Elaine had fallen asleep. Well, that's all right. Sleep will do her more good anyway. But I enjoyed the coffee. A little later, I'd like some more. Oh, sure, Tex. I'll get as much as you want. Hey, what about the Euclidians? I just had Thales on the radio. They're coming aboard right away, and they're not going to stop to argue about it. The Euclidians agreed to your plans without resistance. They did. Doesn't sound right to me. And it wouldn't to me, Jerry, if I hadn't heard it with my own ears. Well, I'll bet it's a trick. I would suspect that. No, not this time. Frankly, I expected some argument about it. But for some reason, Thales sounded absolutely hopeless. Yes, I think you're right, Tex. All the fight has gone out of them, but why? I don't understand it. I'm just glad of it. Yes, Skipper? Come. What's up? Hurry. What's happening, Skipper? Euclidean. Euclidean coming up out of the water? Aye. Oh, boy, come on, Joan. We've got to see yes, this. Yes, Jerry, it is very exciting. Are uh, the crew all lined up to run him into the hole? Aye. Come on, Pat. This is what we've been waiting for. Yes, Tex, this is what we've been waiting for. Hurry up. The first Euclidean is coming up the ladder. 